This little magic box of retro wonders can play all of your favourite classic consoles and computers from back in the day. And it's not emulation either, or at least not software emulation, which is probably what you're used to. This uses a different technology called FPGA, which I'll uncover a bit later on in the video. All you need to know for now is that FPGA makes this by far the most authentic retro gaming experience that you're going to get outside of playing on the original consoles. So I was looking to get one of these for many years since they were first announced, but I never actually got round to it. So I have to thank my channel sponsor, by Frostbridge Studios, who very, very kindly sent me over this full Mr. Kit here. You can actually get this one pre-built on the website, but they went far above and beyond just providing me with the console. They actually provided me, I've got it here in the box that it came in, with a complete set of written out instructions on how to get everything set up, so I really can't thank them enough for that. They also included a micro SD card with the system that comes pre-installed with loads of games. So as you can tell, there's a lot I want to cover in this video. I'm going to go into 15 reasons why I think the Mr. FPGA is the perfect way to play retro games. Let's get started. So the first point is, like I said, this uses FPGA technology. The only time I'd used FPGA technology before was when I used the Super NT, which is another fantastic console, and I actually did a full review of that a few years ago as well. But basically what it is, it means that the programmers have actually gone all the way down to exactly how the original systems worked, and then reprogrammed that onto this D10 Nano chip here, which is an Intel chip that can configure itself to run almost identically to the original consoles, or as close to identical as they can get. It's very different to software emulation. Software emulation, which is what you're probably used to on the PC, or if you've been playing retro games on the Switch or something like that, that uses step-by-step -step instructions, whereas an FPGA can run multiple instructions in parallel, which means that it's a lot faster, it means there's a lot less lag, and I better go and get the door. Right, so I just went to get the door because I just ordered this fan because if you're not aware, the UK is in a bit of a heat wave at the minute, so if I look really sweaty during the video, this is why. I'm going to see whether I can record with it on, but I might have to turn it off and just put up with it for this video and then get back to it. So as I was saying, FPGA technology feels a lot nicer than playing software emulated games, or at least I think so anyway. Another thing that I was really surprised about was just how easy it was to actually use this. One of the reasons why I'd never actually got one for myself in the past, because I thought it always sounded a little bit too complicated to try and get into. But even though I said that Bifrost Bridge Studios supplied me with an SD card, which was already full of all of the different consoles and software that you need to get this up and running, I did decide to try and set it up by myself from scratch, and I have to say that the entire process only took about 10 or 15 minutes, and there's a very simple instruction set online. In fact, the community has a load of really good instructions on how to get whatever you want running with this up and running really, really easily. You can also use any USB controller, so I was actually using the USB controller from the Retro Freak, which is one of my favorite USB controllers, to be honest, and it works perfectly in this. Just plug it into the system, go into the controller configuration options for the system that you wanted to play. Set up the buttons once, you only have to do it once, and then whenever you open up that core to play that system again, it will already know all of your control and configuration options that you'd already set up. The only thing, unfortunately, that I couldn't get working on here was the Neo Geo core. I followed all the instructions online and I made sure that all my ROMs were in the right place, but for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to work. I thought I'd managed to fix it last night, but trying it again this morning before making this video, unfortunately, it's impossible. So, if anyone's tried to get Neo Geo working on this, let me know what I'm doing wrong. Now, reason number three why I think this is such a great little device I love how easy it is to change the region and to change from 50 to 60 Hertz. So one of the problems that I had with the Super NT was that it was very slow and clunky to actually change between 50 and 60 Hertz. So one of the games that I really wanted to play on the Super NT is a game that I got a few years ago called Terra Enigma. Of course it never came out in America, but the European version runs in 50 Hertz, which means that it's about 12% slower than it actually should be. So playing it through the Super NT was a little bit awkward because you'd have to reset the system every time and change the region and then change it back once you were in the game. But with this, you can literally just press the menu button on the controller 
and just change it straight away without needing to reset anything. So in that sense it's a lot easier and a lot quicker to change a lot of settings. There's also a load of really cool display options for this. Of course you can use HDMI and you can output up to 1440p and it looks incredible. You can also play it on a CRT if you've got the right cables for it, which I'll uncover a bit later on in this video. As well as the different screen options for changing the display and the frequency, there's also a load of options which are unique to each console. One that I really loved was for the Game Boy Advance system on here. You can actually choose to display the background and the sprites at two times the original resolution. And just look how it improves the quality of a game like F-Zero GP Legend here. It was just mind-blowing to see how much of an improvement it can make while still maintaining the exact speed and frequency of the original system. It really is a sight to behold. Point number four now, and of course something that emulators can do as well, but something that I personally love, and I'm sure if you've been around on the channel for a while, you already know this, but of course this can play ROM hacks, translation patches, homebrew games, all that great stuff. So one of the first things that I did when I got this was actually take all of the files off my EverDrives and put them onto this. So I've been playing translation patches, I've been playing all of my homebrew games on here, I've been playing all of the ROM hacks, so all of the Game Boy ROM hacks that I talked about in my ROM hacks video uh, last year at some point, I can play all of that on this and I really love being able to have everything in one location. In fact from now on I think all of the homebrew videos and all of the ROM hack videos that I'm going to do I'm going to be recording it all from this little box right here. And that brings me up to point number five, and that is that this makes it extremely easy to capture footage from all my different retro systems, especially now at the minute, whereas I've actually not got any of my systems in this house because I'm actually moving house. So having something like this that I can easily plug into the capture card and record at the original frame rate and resolution of the original system has honestly been a blessing and I'm going to put it to very good use in the future. I've got loads of videos planned for all of the different systems that this little device here can support as well. Now I'll be back in a second, I'm going to get some water, stay hydrated because it's about 32 degrees in here at the minute. So point number six, I'm going to go back to some of the display options. There's something called integer scaling which is really really important and it's something that not a lot of software emulators actually have support for or depending on what you're playing it on they may not always be set up correctly. So sometimes when you're playing a retro game on a modern system or on an emulator you get kind of a shimmer as the screen scrolls. But with integer scaling and using the five times scale it actually stretches the pixels so they exactly match the resolution of the screen. You lose a little bit at the top and at the sides but it eliminates all of that shimmer and it makes for a really nice and really fluid gaming experience and it's so easy to use in this. You just go into the video options and you can turn on five times integer scale. You can also turn on something called wide integer scale as well which I really like. It's not a full 16 by 9 but it actually stretches the pixels very slightly to match how they would appear on a CRT rather than using square pixels which makes things a little bit squished. So you've got all sorts of different options for that and I really love all of the different options I can spend hours tinkering with them, I really can. But because this system is so authentic to the originals, sometimes the frame rate or the resolution can be a little bit different to what the TV is expecting. But luckily most of the cores have something that you can turn on in order to match it to more well-known frequencies that definitely helped a lot when I was capturing footage for this because at first I kept losing the signal so so if you're having problems on a modern display try turning on one of those settings and see whether it helps. Now point number seven here and this is something else that's really cool this is something that software emulation can do but the original systems can't really and that is actually improving the original systems so one of the things I said was the double resolution for the GBA games but you can also do other things like putting the original console CPU into a turbo mode to reduce slowdown which is brilliant for some SNES shooter Ups, which really suffered on the original system. You can also remove the sprite limits as well which is really great 
for playing things like original Game Boy or Master System, where on the original system the sprites would flicker quite a lot, but by turning this on all the sprites are completely vivid on the screen and it makes for a much smoother gaming experience. Number 8 is the fact that this also has really great support for a lot of retro arcade games. Each one has been specifically programmed to work with the Mister, and you can tell that it's just spot on. Playing a game like Dig Dug or Pac-Man or Galaxian, all of your favourite arcade games will feel absolutely perfect on this device. I can only imagine how good it is to hook this up to a CRT and have an arcade stick. I really want to do that at some point in the future. Now unfortunately this next point I couldn't actually prove for this video so another thing that you can actually do with the Mister is I was about to say emulate but what you can do is actually play a number of retro computers on here as well but I found out yesterday when I was trying to get the keyboard to work with this apparently the power supply that I have doesn't support the keyboard that I'm trying to use because it draws too much power from the console so it keeps resetting it. So I did order a new power supply and a new switch from the Mr. website, but unfortunately it didn't turn up in time for this video, so so I'm really pleased to say that about an hour before I was about to finish editing this video, the plug actually turned up and I can use the keyboard, so expect another video in the future with me talking through some of the computer games that you can play using the Mr. And I just have to say a huge thank you to everyone on Twitter who was so helpful in getting me the right accessories I needed in order to get this to work. Number 10, and this is one of the main reasons why I wanted this, and one of the reasons why I've loved using it so much over the past few months, that is the fact that you can actually get this to work with a traditional CRT television, and I absolutely love it. It took me a long time to actually figure out the right cables to get it to work, but when I did, I was completely blown away by the result. It was even better than I imagined. It doesn't produce any additional lag, as I proved here with this 240p test suite, and all of the different cables and stuff, I'll try and get a video of how I got everything set up and explain a little bit about my setup. But bear in mind, if you do want to get one of these for yourself, this is the digital version, which means it doesn't have native VGA output, but you can actually get an analog version of this as well for around the same price, and it actually has an analog port on the back there. So instead of doing all the crazy setup that I did to manage to get it to work, you can actually just plug a VGA cable straight in. So I'm gonna try and explain what I've managed to do in order to get this to work on the CRT and to capture footage at the same time. So we have the Mister here with a HDMI to VGA adapter, that's what this is here. And then we have this 5 volt DC adapter here, which is a USB plug that's going into a USB plug under the desk. We also have, and this is where I really struggled to find something that worked, this is an audio cable that loops back round on itself into this VGA adapter here, which you can get from the Mr. website. I'll put a link to the, in the description to that. And then this VGA cable here is VGA to SCART. So that goes into this box here, which is a SCART splitter, as you can see there. And then this has two separate SCART cables coming off this. One into the CRT, which is just up there, and the other is going into this box here, which is the OSSC, which is the open source scan converter. So it takes the digital signal from there, turns it into an analog signal, which goes into here, which then does a line doubling, turns it back into an analog signal, and then this HDMI cable here, the end of it is just out of sight over there, but there it is right there in the corner. So that then goes into the capture card, which allows me to capture gameplay from the Mister using this setup here, as well as also, if I angle the camera up here so you can see, as well as also putting it onto the CRT, which we've got on the screen right there, as you can see. And it does work, and I'm very proud of myself for actually figuring all of that out. It was only a temporary solution until I get the new house and the new studio set up, and then I'll be able to just capture it straight into the capture card on the computer, but for now, that's the best I could do, and I was really, really happy with the results. Now for point number 11, I'm going to talk a little bit about the different scripts that you have with the system. There's a brilliant one called Update All, which goes through every core and updates it all to the latest version, as long as you've got internet on the system. You can either get 
get internet by using a Wi-Fi dongle or by plugging in an ethernet cable. There's also something else that was really important for me and that is the fact that you can have multiple different INI files. They're basically the settings that when the mister turns on it knows what sort of video signal to feed through the cables. So I had one that was specifically set up for the CRT and I had another one that was specifically set up for HD and for the capture card and it's as simple as holding B and pressing left or right to swap between the two when you're actually using the console. And this kind of brings me on to number 12, and that is that the Mister has a very dedicated and very, very helpful community out there online. All of the problems that I've had with the system so far, for example, trying to get it to run on the CRT, or trying to get the computer games to run using the USB keyboard, all of those questions have been answered really well by the community out there, either on Twitter, or over on Reddit, or even Discord. So if you're ever stuck trying to get this set up, just know that there's a really dedicated community out there that will help you answer any questions that you've got with the system. Number 13 kind of goes back to the fact that this is new technology running on one of these boards and that is the fact that it's constantly being updated with new cores, new ways of playing the games, new menu options. So for example recently the GBA core just got updated to actually allow two player support through this console here, splitting the display out onto two separate TVs, which sounds really cool. I didn't get a chance to try it for this video, but have a look at some of these images and some of these screenshots here to see what's possible. As well as that, of course, there's also dedicated developers out there to add new systems and new support. I know that PS1 is being worked on in the background, and I'm really excited to give that a go when it's finished. And number 14 is just how amazing it is to have the functionality of all of these different consoles, handhelds, computers, and arcade machines, all in one little box. I used to have a huge range of consoles, I actually had 22 consoles plugged in at one point, all hooked up into the TV in the living room, but as I said, I'm moving house, so I don't actually have any of the consoles available, so having this little box here, with everything inside it in one little package, is just a dream come true, it really is. I know you can also do a similar thing with the Raspberry Pi, but from what I've heard of the two, this is the superior product. If any of you down below use a Raspberry Pi, let me know what you think about it, and let me know whether you want me to get one and do a video on one in the future, because I am interested in other emulator technology as well, so maybe that's a future video idea, maybe I could compare the two side by side. And the final point in this video is the fact that you don't need to go out and spend so much money to actually buy a fully completed kit. If you want to make your own, you can actually do that by buying specific parts, you can actually make it as simple or as complicated as you like. Unfortunately, to get these kits, I couldn't find anywhere in the UK that actually sells them, but you can buy the individual parts in the UK, so I'll put a link down in the description below to all of the best places to buy all of the different bits you need in order to get the mister up and running. I've kind of struggled doing this video because it is crazy hot. Let me know if you've ever used a mister before, let me know whether this video was useful, let me know whether it answered any of your questions. I might do a follow-up, because like I said, I've been trying to get the keyboard to work, but for now, that's all. I'll see you all next week for the next episode. Goodbye.